Holy smokes, I'm gonna look like tin cup out here today with all these devices, huh? I got hack motion on, I got flight scope out. Today, we're here at My Golf DNA because I am going to help you answer one of the most frustrating issues that a lot of you at home deal with, and that is how in God's beautiful green earth do I get my golf ball swings to look like my practice swings? I sit out there and I grind and grind and grind. My practice swings are exactly the way that I want them to look. And when I put a golf ball in front of it, it changes very quickly. That right there, my friends, is very frustrating. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I handle business personally. I'm gonna show you a process that I put my students through when they're starting to make a real change and starting to bring the golf ball back into the equation. And I hope that you can learn a whole lot from this because what you need in this process to make a real change is you need a whole lot of patience, you need a whole lot of perseverance, you need a good practice program, and you need to give yourself a little bit of grace because we're always chasing perfection in the golf swing. We always are. And perfection just doesn't exist. You want to continue to work on getting 1% better every time you go out and practice. You wanna make your practice sessions meaningful. Stop getting in your own way. Stop thinking that this stuff is gonna come easy. This stuff takes time. So what we're gonna do first off in this process is I'm gonna hit 10 golf balls in stock shot format. Today, I've chosen a six iron. You can do this with seven iron, eight iron, nine iron, and I know a lot of you at home don't have data available to you, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I use hack motion and flight scope simultaneously to actually get to a practice program that's gonna be beneficial to me over the long haul. All right, two left on the home stretch. All right, so not good, not great, just kind of okay. Hit some good shots. Definitely have a lot of data to look at. So let's go look at that data now and look at some of the swings. Now, when I looked at the camera and then I looked at the flight scope data and then I looked at the hack motion data, we could see that when I was hitting the golf ball fairly well and when I was miss hitting it, from time to time, the club path got a little bit too far from in to out. And the reason why that actually happened in my swing shape is because of something that I was doing very early on in the swing. My wrist actually started out in a fair amount of extension based off of my grip. As I start the golf swing, as I start to shift and turn my body, my wrist moved quickly into flexion. And by the time it got up to the top of the swing, it was substantially into flexion. But what that did is it started to flatten the swing plane off very early. And that momentum and inertia got flatter more in behind me. And that from there got the shaft plane a little bit flatter and the club face a little bit more closed. On the way down, as much as I tried to recover, my hands and my arms were coming a little bit too far into out. And I was trying to get things back out in front of me. And what that produced was a very high draw, a ball flight that I want to get away from. I want a mid-level trajectory ball flight that's got very little movement in it that I can actually work in both directions as I need to. So what I'm going to be ultimately trying to do here is get my path pretty close to the zero number and in order to do that, what I'm gonna be focusing in on is trying to get a little less movement towards flexion early on in the swing shape and get it a little bit more towards extension. That momentum and inertia that I'm gonna put or that little input that I'm gonna have in the club is gonna make the swing shape a little bit more upright for me, which in turn is gonna help keep my hands and arms from getting deep and in behind me, which should ultimately affect the swing plane and path. Now, I do have four do's and I do have four don'ts in this process. And as I start to go through it, I start to practice it, you're gonna hear me repeat these things plenty of times over. I'm gonna talk about the four don'ts at first because these are extremely important for you to get into your brain right away. The first thing that I don't want you to ever do when you go out there and you're starting to work on bringing the golf ball back to your swing change is I don't want you to go out there and rifle tons and tons of golf balls. Hitting a golf ball while you're working on a change that goes in the wrong direction and then saying, oh, that was not right. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get it this next time. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. That never yields good results, never. Don't try to go out there and hit hundreds and hundreds of golf balls. Number two, understand that when it comes to the game of golf, perfection does not exist. You're not gonna go out there and be perfect. You're gonna have bad practice sessions. You're gonna have good practice sessions. 
we're not trying to be perfect. What we're trying to do is get 1% better every time we practice. Just trying to get a little bit better. This game requires a ton of patience, a ton of fortitude, and a whole lot of good solid practice sessions before you actually start to see real results. Number three, one of the most important parts of this don't process is that I don't want you to go out there and work on 35 different things. One or two things is totally fine. You wanna be as buttoned up on those two movements as you possibly can, and you don't want to change the entire swing shape and have things that are not necessarily in line with what you normally do on the golf course. So it's important that when you are starting to add the golf ball back in the mix here, and you're ready to hit shots, that when you're doing your practice reps, that you're not looking off into a mirror, your eyes are focused on the golf ball, and you're trying to make real movement inside of a real swing that you would normally have on the golf course. Very, very important piece here. There's so many times I watch people with their eyes moving all around, their setup is vastly different, they're, they're looking in mirrors or whatnot. When you're out here, you should be using a camera to be able to back check things, because we're gonna be working on movement here. And you gotta train yourself exactly how you'll be doing things on the golf course. Number four, the final piece of the don'ts. The most important piece, really, is that when you start out this process and you're getting ready to hit golf balls, I don't care if you top it, chunk it, shank it. I don't care if it hits the golf bag over here and comes back and hits me in the shin. Our job here is to get focused on new movement and let the golf ball get in the way of those new movements. You should be working on things in the correct order in your golf swing. And a lot of you at home don't know if you are working on the right things because the world of golf instruction and the abyss that we call YouTube golf instruction, it's, it, it forces you to get lost because you have these golf instructors that you like to follow and the information sounds really sexy. You should go out there and work on these things. Chinese chopsticks and whatever. Listen, everybody has their own sets of issues. Everybody has their own golf DNA. You should be working on things that are geared to you and your game at this very moment. If you don't know if you're working on things at the right time or the right things at the right time, then come over to the website and sit with me. Go through the consult phase and I'll help you understand exactly what it is that you should be working on and why you should be working on it. You have to have that understanding. So under no circumstance do I ever want you to put the luster on the golf ball strike at first. You should be working your butt off to try to make the changes that your instructor gave you show up on camera with the golf ball being present. And the guess what the fun part about that is? Is you can put the accountability back in your instructor's hands. That's right, you go out there and you're like, I just paid all this money for golf lessons, I'm doing the things on camera beautifully and I'm hitting balls and I'm hitting it all over the map. I want that accountability. If you follow the plan that I put in place, you will get better at golf. You got it? Okay, good. Now, as we go through the do's, I'm gonna to start to show you and demonstrate on camera right now exactly what you should be doing in this process. The first thing that you wanna do before you start going through the process of getting your baseline information like I did, and before you start working on the changes, is you want to have a good plan in place. And having a good plan in place means you need to know what it is that you're working on, why you're working on it, and how you're gonna get that job done. I always like to have a plan in place that's gonna be centered around how that person's lifestyle really is. Some of you don't have five, six, seven hours a day to be able to spend out on the driving range as much as you want to, to be able to work through things. So in my case, perfect example, I've got about an hour, hour and a half today to be able to work on this stuff. So I'm gonna be trying to hit probably about 10 to 15 golf balls max. And I'm gonna be really focusing in on a new wrist movement early on in the swing shape that's probably gonna be uncomfortable. But my goal here today is to just stay committed to that movement. What leads into number two. So number two is the most important part when you get started in this process is to create awareness of that new movement and stay aware. The people that get the best success when it comes to swing change are the ones that will leave a driving range and feel mentally exhausted. Not physically exhausted, unless you're out here grinding for nine hours, but you should feel mentally exhausted. And the reason for that is, is that you are challenging your subconscious to the umpteenth degree. You need to do that, right? You need to challenge your subconscious. And in order to do that, you have to stay 100% aware and 100% committed. Number three, one of the most important do's in this process that all of you at home need to burn on the brim of your cap or you need to write it on the ground where you're gonna be hitting golf balls is that you're gonna take that awareness that you created and your goal in that practice session is to hit one or more golf balls with a new movement showing up on camera. That's it. That's what you need to have in this process to know that your hard work is starting to pay off. Remember, going back to the don'ts though, don't put the luster around the strike of the golf ball at first. You wanna see that the hard work is showing up on camera. It feels very good to do so 
even if you're not hitting the golf ball at the level that you want to. The fourth and very important component of the do's in this process are have fun, have some patience, and give yourself some grace in this process. It's not a world of perfection. Have fun, go out there and enjoy the time that you are when you're working on things. It makes the whole process a lot easier. When you go out there and things are going poorly, you need to be disciplined enough to be able to just walk away from the driving range and come back another day and go work on your short game. Don't sit out here and keep beating yourself up. You want to have fun in this process. If you're having fun, you get more into what we call a flow state, and it's much easier for you to be able to go through the processes of change because I'll tell you right now, nothing about swing change is glamorous. It sucks, it's hard work, and a lot of times it takes longer than a lot of you expect. I know, I get it. So as you begin to start to watch me practice now, I want you to pay very close attention on how I'm handling business. Now remember, my goal today is not to hit a ton of golf balls. In fact, with the time that I have available to me today, I've actually figured out that I'm gonna to try to hit about 10 golf balls max. You're gonna see in my practice session that I'm starting out from a static address position. I'm rehearsing new movements very slowly. I'm making sure that I have connection to those movements and I'm gradually starting to pick up the pace as I get more and more comfortable with it. Now, when I get to a point where I'm getting ready to hit a golf shot, I like to give myself one good solid rep somewhere between 70 and 80% speed. That's what I like to do. Now I have some players that like to do it at 50% speed. I have some players that like to even do it at a snail's pace. My, me personally, the way that I learn is I have to move in an athletic sort of way in order for it to feel like a real golf swing. So in that final rep, you'll see me do about an 80% speed swing, trying to get it perfectly right. I don't take a lot of time and then I move into the golf ball and then I hit a shot. Now that would be considered one set. If you're really committed in this process, what I would always suggest is that you have anywhere between one set to three sets and then stop doing what you're doing and go look at things on camera. You wanna look at the practice reps first to see if the movements are being done correctly. Then what you wanna do is you wanna start shifting your attention to that final swing that you're making before the golf ball to see if that looks very much in line with what you're looking for. And then the final thing is, is that you wanna look at the golf ball swing and see how close that golf ball swing is to the practice swing. So what I can tell you right now is that this was a successful practice session for me. And the reason why it was successful is because I got to see a different hand and arm position through the takeaway into the top of the backswing. And I got to see that when I was hitting a golf ball. Now, I didn't hit the golf ball perfectly when I did these movements, but I did see a significant change in the ball flight. And that's fine, that's what I wanted to see, right? I'm gonna to continue to grind this out over the next few weeks, next few months, and I'm gonna to continue to work on things exactly the same way. I'm gonna reduce the number of practice reps and increase the number of balls as I get more and more proficient. That's how you wanna approach this entire situation. So many of you at home struggle in the game of golf because you don't know how to practice properly or you're working on the wrong things at the wrong time. And that's exactly what we help you do here at My Golf DNA is we help you take an entire look at the entire complexity of your golf game. We sit down with you, we help you understand exactly what it is that you should be working on, why you should be working on it, and how you're gonna get the job done. Because I know you want two things in this world. You wanna start hitting the golf ball better and you wanna see your scores start to go down. That's it. If you get those two things going, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna to stick to any program. We will help you get there. Come over to My Golf DNA, sign up for our lowest price point membership, sit through the consult with me, let us show you what we can do. People that have signed up for our program love the consult because we get to talk about everything that bothers you or everything that you like about your current game and we get to help you set realistic expectations and realistic goals. And a lot of you at home are gonna be very surprised with what your goals actually should look like when it's all said and done. Just so you know, and I've been watching videos for at least three years. Okay. So, and I've watched them all, dude. There's something about you, man. Just as soon as you, I saw your first video, I was like, okay, Tyler is doing something totally different. Thank I, you. It's weird, it's weird. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it, because. You're capable of getting better at this game, every single one of you. You just have to have a plan that's designed for you. Stop falling victim to the abyss of golf instruction that's so sexy with all the marketing and then all these people that you can see making all these wonderful changes on camera that aren't really getting the golf ball in the way of it. You want a program that's designed for you.